obviously, somebody has been watching or listening to my thoughts on a certain head coach because I've gotten over the span of about the past two weeks several questions about this guy. And so I thought, hey, Jesse and Colin, let's just throw this in the Sunday night show. So it's who, who would you think it's about? As I apply the lip balm here, who would you think it's about? Well, it could be three guys. And um, we, we spin the magic wheel and it lands on the guy in Baton Rouge. So Brian Kelly is very, very interesting as a name that's just thrown about in conversation amongst the college football public. I had this question from Gerald. It said, am I the only non-LSU fan that thinks Brian Kelly's a great coach? Why do so many people seem to hate the guy? Bri Gerald, I don't think a ton of people do. I just think that there is a crowd out there that's very vocal. Okay, so I tried to coin a phrase the other day. I'm going to see if it sticks. It's still really early, but we'll see if it sticks. So it is, it is my belief that most people don't, don't either hate Brian Kelly or, or don't even think ill of him. They don't, don't think, they don't look down on him. I think the 10 or trash crowd is very loud. The 10 or trash crowd is the crowd that thinks you've either won a national championship or you're trash. And that crowd, although small in numbers, they're very vocal. And Brian Kelly or Lincoln Riley or Ryan Day, they get targeted a lot by the 10 or trash crowd. I would have Brian Kelly in the like four to seven range of active head coaches. If I just did power ratings, which we'll probably end up doing on the show in the not, in the not too distant future. I'd have Brian Kelly somewhere like four to seven or four to eight in the head coaching rankings in college football. I think most people would agree with that, but the people who didn't agree with it would shout really, really quick, and they'd say, nope, he's overrated, and then you know our good old friend off to the side, Carl Casual over here, he'd come in and say, what has he won? What has he won, Josh? And at that point, you've already got him, even though he doesn't know it. So what he would mean by that is, Brian Kelly hasn't won a national championship. How could he be somewhere between the fourth and the eighth best head coach in America? And I would say, Carl, Carl, could you name me the current active head coaches? Hoops have won national titles, and Carl would go, Bleh! and he would forget about Mac Brown, and he would be able to name Kirby, and it'd take him a second, but then he remembered Dabo won a couple. And I would say, Carl, even going by that logic, if I ranked Brian Kelly between four and eight, there aren't at least four head coaches out there who are active with a national title. And by the way, Carl, if the sole metric you want to go off of is national championships won, where are you putting Mac Brown? You really putting Mac Brown in the top three of active head coaches? Is that something you want to look me in the eye and tell me you're doing? Carl would go, oh, I, I, I got a call. I got a call. I, so, oh, hold on. Hey, babe. Hey, Carl's single. He's not talking to anyone. But Carl would wrap himself into a pretzel intellectually, and he would start talking nonsense. Uh, here's the fact of the matter. Brian Kelly hasn't won a national championship, but he's a really good coach. Just like Riley, just like Ryan Day, you don't have to have a national championship ring on your finger to be a really good coach. Here's the wild part, though. For the crowd that is tin or trash in nature, for the crowd that thinks you've got to have a championship ring on your finger to validate your existence as a good head coach, I could pose an A-B scenario to these people. Scenario A is Brian Kelly wins double-digit games the next three years, goes to the playoff every year, but doesn't win a title, okay? Scenario B is he goes 10-3 and three next year, backs his way into the playoff, and LSU makes a run as the 10 seed and wins it all. Then they finish sub-500 the next two years. This crowd would take scenario B, and in their mind, that scenario, where two out of the three years were sub-500 at LSU, but one of them happened to be lightning in a bottle, national championship ring, they would say that elevates Brian Kelly as a head coach, but double-digit wins three years in a row with three back-to-back-to-back -back -back playoff appearances, that doesn't do anything much for me. Insanity. Total insanity. So anyway, I don't think that's the majority, Garrett. I think that's the minority. Here's the shame of it all. You want to ring the shame bell. The shame of it all is if I were to tell you a couple of years ago when Brian Kelly was being hired that in year two he was going to have a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback at LSU, you and I would both think national championship. Why? Because history has told us there's a certain baseline of defensive performance you can just take for granted at LSU. Like even if they're not going to be elite, it's Louisiana State. Certainly they're going to they're have defensive linemen 
just crawling out of the woodwork. Defensive backs being a problem at LSU? Absolutely not. And yet they lost, what, Jesse, three games last year with a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. That's the shame of it all. That was the shot he had. I mean, you give me a top 25 defense, top 30 defense at LSU last year, they may very well have won the national championship. Remember, Jay Peephole, we still had him top 10. You, do, I don't think you guys remember this. I told you, because we partnered with FanDuel, and I told you a lot of times I can hit up FanDuel and I can say, here's what my model would make a game today if they played it on a neutral field. What would you guys have? They had LSU at the end of the year favored over a lot of teams. They had LSU favored over some teams that made the playoff. They had LSU favored over a team that went to the national title game. So, LSU, good team last year, but very, very limited because defensively they were, um, well, they were, they were wet garbage. That's what they were last year. But in fairness now, in fairness, they, as a program, made the necessary moves staff-wise. It's the most improved side of the ball in the country when you're talking about coaching upgrades. So good on them. Wish it would have been there last year.